What I want to do is take you on a tour of The Art of Marriage, our new six-session video event that's designed to be hosted by anyone who has a heart for seeing strong, healthy marriages flourish in your community. On our website, theartofmarriage.com, you'll find information about how to host an event. There are promotional tools, answers to frequently asked questions. But what I want to do here is give you a guided tour through each of the six sessions so you'll get an idea of how the material is presented. At the core, each session includes input and instruction from well-respected pastors and Bible teachers who keep us grounded in the Bible as our source. Wrapped around them are stories of couples dealing with challenges in their marriage. There are some funny sketches, some dramatic stories. We've included some man-on-the-street segments. We've tried to keep it fast-paced and compelling. In session one, we talk about marriage as God intended it to be. Session two is all about isolation and conflict in marriage, looking at the root causes. We show how the gospel is the only solution, our only hope. In session three, we talk about a husband's job description and a wife's job description. Session four is all about communication, resolving conflict, and forgiving each other. Session five is about intimacy and sex. And session six points couples to a marriage that leaves a legacy for future generations. So with that as the overview, let's look a little more closely at what's in each of the six sessions. We begin in session one by giving couples a better understanding of God's purposes for marriage. Why would I personally get married? These days, for money. It's tradition, it's, it's what our parents, our grandparents, our great-grandparents have done. I think it starts with just recognizing that marriage is more than me. Your words were beautiful. They were, but after 10 years, will they have only just been words? In this session, we unpack the command to leave, to cleave, and to receive your mate as a gift from God. I've learned that being a wide receiver is a lot like being a wife receiver. I can't just accept my mate as a gift from God. I must choose to receive her all the way into here. There's a moment in which as my wife is walking down the aisle of that church, not only is there no other woman in the room, there is no one else in the room but her for that moment. You know, Bill, when there's a death of a child, as a result of the responsibility of one of the spouses, there's probably an 85% chance for a divorce. I had to come to grips with that. Am I gonna take that anger and just focus on that anger and focus on the mistake, or am I gonna talk about what we have to do going forward as, as a family and as a couple? In session two, we help couples see that the natural drift in marriage is a drift toward isolation. After nearly eight and a half years of marriage, Mark has decided he wants his freedom. He's filing for divorce. Marriage is not about my happiness. It's not about my fulfillment. Marriage requires the shift of the pronoun from mine to ours. He would walk out the door and I'd be like, wait, you're leaving again tonight? And he'd be like, yeah, don't you remember I had this meeting and then I have to go here and I have to speak to these people? And I'd be like, whatever, great. You know what, I'll put the boys to bed by myself again. That's great, hon, see ya. We try to help couples see that this drift toward isolation is a result of our innate selfishness and our sinfulness. Um, body, soul, spirit, I mean, we, our, our minds, our thinking, our emotions, our actions, all of it is affected by the fall. Said the snake, faking genuine concern. Everything would be just fine if she quit trying to control me and if she quit nagging so much and if we had sex more than nine times a year. And I think one of the, the great problems in a marriage relationship is when we lose sight of the, really the command to complete one another. When we do move to competition, we lose, we lose all ability to be one as God designed it and we start moving toward isolation. Ultimately, we want every couple to see that the hope for their marriage is found in a relationship with Jesus and in the gospel. You cannot have a successful marriage without the invasion of the supernatural in your marriage. We need someone above us to deliver us from our self-destructive tendencies. 
Session three is all about our roles, helping couples understand God's design for husbands and wives, learning to perfect the dance that is marriage. The perfect man? Oh wow, that's an intense question. Of a perfect woman? <laughs> Young, blonde, sexy. Submissive? <laughs> Don't tell my wife that. <laughs> old-fashioned ways are probably the best, and if you want to call them old-fashioned, fine. But bring them up to date. I mean, there are still things that you can do in the way of service for your husband, or he can say to me in the way of affirmation that isn't old-fashioned, but is loving. We explain in this session what the Bible says about a man's role in marriage. The provider is the first thing that comes to mind. But coach, sometimes I get confused. Donley, are you whining? Not really, it's just Donley, that. this is marriage. There is no whining in marriage. And as you'd expect, we also talk about a wife's role. The, the woman's role in a marriage relationship is to help her husband. I can just see women now going, Oops, I knew it. Here we go. My generation, I, I took on the role of the cook, the housekeeper, the take the children to school. The day you put on your wedding dress, you put on a new cheerleader outfit. You're cheering for your family team. We never called each other names. I never let the boys call each other names, and I never, ever called Bruce an idiot. But I didn't have to because the boys knew exactly what I meant by my tone of voice. A woman who is reading the scripture, hearing from God what her assignment is in life, praying for her family, praying for her husband, um, is really going to be a woman who is set apart from all the other women on the planet. When we get to session four, we focus on resolving conflict. And we begin by looking at how we communicate with one another. If you can't communicate, the conflict just builds and it starts to compound and the issues just start to pile up. All right, all I need is cage-free eggs, a dozen of them, and two cans of vegetarian refried beans. Do you have trouble listening or retaining information from your wife? You could be suffering from Spousal Selective Listening, or SSL. Where does marriage always go wrong? It's when I want the right to set the rules by which this relationship would work. That's at the bottom of every marriage difficulty. We try to help couples understand the key principles for seeking and granting forgiveness. I'm really sorry. I couldn't be more sorry for the things that I've done in the past. You know that I love you, that's not the way that I meant to handle it. Just need you to be on my side. If you are asking for, for forgiveness, ask for forgiveness. Don't continue the argument. Come in and say, will you forgive me for failing to lead you or failing to love you or failing to submit to you or whatever the issue is, rather than coming in and saying, if I've done anything to offend you, forgive me, which is another way of saying, get over it, you oversensitive person. I'm embarrassed by how I've been treating you. I am sorry, and I want to do a better job. Can you forgive me? Session five is all about intimacy and sex. Um, <laughs> do you want to switch off? Switch off. Yeah. This is a wife. How beautiful are your feet in sandals, oh prince's mm. daughter. My beloved is dazzling and ruddy, outstanding among mm. 10,000. I didn't realize when I got married at 23 how a woman's body worked and how long it took her to reach that point that takes a man, you know, about 20 seconds. Sexual intimacy means getting to know one's husband or wife, which often takes a long time. We tackle some difficult, some tough issues in this session. What I thought would be one of the most rewarding things came, became and can become a struggle. And it was inside that door and inside that room that I experienced uh, some sexual abuse. I'm tired, exhausted from having all these little kids and I just want to go to sleep. And then I feel the hand move over. And then I feel the hand touch me. 
and in places I really don't want to be touched right then, and so it's just like, stop! We try to have some fun with this session, too. Our population continues to plummet. Now, I know that we've learned that playing practical jokes on the pterodactyls doesn't help. But obviously, we need to make new cavemen. The question is how? Meet Tommy and Susie. Tommy and Susie are newlyweds. And although they've already learned a little about sex, they still have a lot to learn about intimacy. Our final session is all about helping couples have a vision for their marriage that goes beyond themselves. Well, your legacy's all you got. They're gonna forget your name. They're not gonna visit your tombstone. Nobody cares. But if my son and my daughters love Jesus Christ, and they tell their children to love Jesus Christ, then I think you'll hear, well done, good and faithful servant. I would hope that they wouldn't say that something like I was selfish or anything like that. They wish I would have gotten, I'd met all my deadlines. <laughs> I hope they'd say something nice, <laughs> like that I was a good friend to them, that I was a very happy person, and that I, I hope that I made a lot of people laugh. I believe that when I'm gone, I want my family to be able to say I'm glad she came. I would, I would say uh, deep love is, is the one thing that has kept us together. I think that's, that's it for me too. It's unconditional love. No matter what, good or bad, we're in it forever. Well, hopefully that gives you some idea of what we put together for the art of marriage. We're grateful for the positive feedback we've been getting from audiences that have attended an event and seen all six sessions. And we hope that with what you've seen here, you'll be motivated to attend an event or even host an Art of Marriage event in your community. Again, you can find out more about The Art of Marriage online at theartofmarriage.com.